Hello guys, so in this part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to trigger the attack behavior on the zombie. So as you can see here, I'm gonna just throw a plant uh, just in front of uh, the zombies here. And you will see that they will attack the plant and make it disappear. And after that, the zombie will just continue his path to the end of the map. So yeah, this is what exactly you will learn today. So before going further, I just need to uh, add something in the zombie spawner. So if you remember in the previous tutorial where we made the zombie spawner, um, I had this boolean here, uh, which is random spawn behavior. Uh, right now, I forgot to uh, implement that, <laughs> that system uh, into the spawner. So we're going to do it right now. So let's open that script, the zombie spawner script. And you can see that we are assigning the, the specific spawner here and we are also doing it there. So what we need to do is just before going any further here, we need to just uh, choose a random spawner if that boolean is true. So we're gonna do that right now. So if a zombie, that a random spawn, what we're gonna do here is just uh, create a new variable int actually we can just uh, change the one from the zombie here so zombie uh, that the zombie uh, that spawner it equal to uh, random that range and that that range will be between um, all the all the available spawners so if we look at the scene here uh, we can see that on the spawner all the child here are the available spawners so we can look at the number of child that the spawner has so here we can look like the minimum value is zero and the maximum value will be uh, the transform that child count <clears throat> So that will make it work. So if we are testing it right now and um, I'm having a random spawn for each zombies, then pressing play. <clears throat> they are now spawning randomly across the world. So they have, each time I'm gonna press play, they're gonna spawn in a random spawner. So they will be at different places. So yeah, there we go for that part. All right, so now we are ready to implement uh, the zombie attack behavior. But just before doing that, we need to edit the plant controller script to be able to receive damage on the plant. So to do that, we're gonna just open the plant controller and also we can open the zombie controller. So here we have the plant controller script. So to receive some damage, we need a health variable and we also need to make a function to receive damage. If you remember, we did the exact same thing on the zombie controller script. So what we're gonna do is just uh, take the code that we made on that script. So open the zombie controller script there. You can see that we have the public in the health. Let me just copy that variable and paste it into the plant controller script. <clears throat> and also into the zombie controller we have the function receive damage which is the exact same thing that we need to um, to have on the other side I also change the damage here a variable to damage value so you also need to change that it's just to have the same uh, the same name attribute as the plan controller so now we just need to copy uh, that this entire script this entire function here and just paste that just under the update script function so there we go now we should be able to receive damage and just before doing that we need to set the health of the plant so just save that script now go into unity and go into your prefab 
and go on your plant. This one is the plant game. And on the plant controller script, you, we have the health. So just before that, we need to look at our zombies, like how many damage did they, they dealt. You see that for now they are dealing nothing. Uh, we can maybe set all of them to one. So they're gonna all deal one damage. So the plant uh, could probably have, I don't know, five health. So it's gonna take five shots to destroy a plant. So that's about it. So now we are ready to make the zombie attack behavior. All right, so let's go with the zombie attack behavior. So you can just open the zombie controller script and we're gonna make uh, a behavior really similar to the one that we did in one of the previous um, video is that uh, when the bullet was uh, colliding with the zombie, we was triggering uh, the receive damage function on the zombie. So what we're gonna do is very similar to that. So if we're go going to look at the previous bullet function that we made together, we can see here that uh, if we are colliding with the layer of the zombie, here we have uh, the get component zombie controller receive damage function, and we are passing the damage value of uh, the zombie there. So we're gonna just copy that function here since we need to do something really similar and just pass the, the function there. So <clears throat> instead of getting the component zombie controller, we're gonna it's gonna be the plant controller script. So we can just change that. And for the rest, it's pretty much the same. We're triggering the same function, which is the same name the receive damage uh, function name here and we are also uh, passing the damage value of the actual zombie here but the thing that we need to make different differently here is that uh, we don't want uh, the zombie to trigger that attack at every frame that it's colliding with the plant so what we need to do here is make a cooldown uh, a cooldown strip that will prevent the zombie to attack <laughs> at every frame and instead we're gonna add a cooldown variable that will uh, set up uh, how many times that we need to wait before uh, being able to attack again so let's do that here uh, just under the damage value we can make a public float which will be the damage cooldown so now we will be able to set up that cooldown on, on the zombie after that so instead of triggering the script right here what we're gonna do is just that we're gonna make an enumerator function so let's make that enumerator which will be um, Let's call it attack. And the enumerator having an error right now because you need to add um, a yield return inside of it to have the um, to be able to wait for X amount of time. So yield return. We can make a new wait for a second function here and we're gonna pass inside of it the damage cooldown variable and here instead of triggering at that function there we're gonna just triggering it right after the wait for a second but what, what we're gonna do just just before sorry and here what we can do is just add a collision 2d collision variable that we will need to pass from the on trigger enter 2d function so we can delete that and make a start coroutine here and trigger the attack function and inside the attack function we're gonna just pass the collision that we detected before so what's gonna happen here is that 
at the second that the zombie will collide um, with the plant we're gonna trigger that function here which will trigger the damage on the plant after that we're gonna wait for that amount of second and we're gonna trigger again the same function so we're gonna just press enter and just paste that here so it's gonna be it's gonna trigger that function forever until the plant until until the plant die or until the zombie die, you know? So that should work now. What we need to do also is to go on the zombie. So prefab zombie. And here the damage cooldown. Let's say that we're attacking uh, every one second. I'm gonna do the same for every zombie. So every second we're gonna deal one damage to the plant and the plant have five health. So let's press play and let's t let's test that behavior. We're gonna make, we're gonna have the plant here also. So if we're do doing stop here and looking at the plant object, right there, you can see that the health is now three, now two, so it didn't die. Now I can add another plant there, uh, just right here and look at that plant instead and look at his health you can see it's one and now it's gonna be zero but we don't have any reference <laughs> to delete the plant so we're gonna fix that so let's go on the actual plant controller here so transform power and get spawn point yeah that's the thing that we need to remove here that was previously on uh on the zombie which we don't have to do here that was removing the zombie from the list don't need to do that anymore so just remove it and just save and we can go and test it again so i'm gonna wait for the bucket zombie since you have more health now we can look at the actual plant it's having five health the bucket zombie should remove one, three, two, one, zero, and now the plant is, is dead. So one other thing that we have to do here is to, um, if the collision is now no, null, we need to tell to the zombie that he need to continue his path like before. So what we're gonna do here is right there. Um, if collision is null, First, we need to return, but just before returning the script, uh, we can make a yield return null. Or just not attacking, yeah. What we're gonna do here is just, if it's null, we're, we're going to do something. If it's not, we're gonna pass everything that we had there inside of it so if it's null what we need to do is just make the it stop to false and the zombie will continue his path so let's try that I'm gonna again wait for the bucket zombie at the plant to one zero and now the zombie just continue his path since the plant is dead so yeah that's about it guys so now your zombie can attack plant and uh, you're starting to have like the entire behavior so yeah congrats and i hope to see you in the next tutorial guys